What's up folks, today I'm here with Bullet Per Minute, a first person rhythm shooter. A genre I honestly hope becomes popular because honestly this shit was fun. But just how fun is Bullet Per Minute? As usual, if you enjoy this video, why not subscribe? And if you would prefer an audio only version, the link is down below. Also, don't forget to join in on the Discord in the description for updates, game talks, and everything in between. Is Bullet Per Minute worth the 20 bucks? Well, I'm about to tell you. My name is Tanner and this is For Your Money, a different kind of review. What's the story, you ask? Kick ass, listen to music, kill bosses, listen to more music while navigating the ever-changing corridors of a Norse-themed nightmare. It's no secret that most games like this are simple in the story department, and honestly, that's just because they want to focus on what's fun. So, let's talk about the gameplay. Now, as I said, this game is a rhythm shooter, but it also has roguelite elements with randomly generated dungeons in more ways than one. This is a game that does require skill and blind luck, so let's talk about the basics. As a shooter, this game works magic, I mean, or at least it did for me. Since you're doing everything at the beat, it's important to keep rhythm. If you've ever seen a musician play an instrument, for the most part, you'll see they're always doing something to keep up with the tempo. Usually it's tapping their foot. This kind of works similar to that. Now for me, I would do random stuff like dash around, dash in place, reload when I didn't need to, or begin to reload and just continue shooting. I mean, it's neat. I had habits that helped me keep the beat, which allowed me to get more immersed into the game. It is tough at first because you're keeping this beat all while trying not to die, and if you get hit four times, you're dead, unless you have upgrades, which I'll talk about in a bit. Now on top of all that, you have to obviously kill all the enemies to proceed to the next area. Some may hate this next part, and I didn't entirely have an opinion, it was just part of the game, but the aim assist is very much real. You'll watch your crosshair move if it gets close to an enemy if you have the dot reticle. If you have the metrodome reticle, as I like to call it, you'll see the crosshair is much larger, and honestly, your assist area is slightly larger than that. Now, like I said, I didn't have an opinion because I get why they did this. There's a lot to keep up with in this game, and luckily they do have options to ease that up for everyone, but I did not see one to ease up the aim assist. The roguelite in this game is one that I wouldn't say is rough, but it works odd and either in your favor or against it. The levels, of course, are randomly generated, changing up the layout, but also changing how the map I guess feels. For example, Asgard has different varieties you can get like space, barren, dark, etc. They're all exactly what they sound like. Dark gives you a flashlight, space makes the mobility similar to outer space, but the interesting one is barren, as in barren wasteland for not shit for loot, as in coins, keys, health potions, upgrades, etc. This is where it works against your favor, and I saw some people disliked it. Here's the scoop. If you were to, let's say, get Baron Asgard, keep in mind each level has two stages. So if you get one, then you're going to get Baron two. Now you're going through two levels with a better chance of scoring with a girl of your dreams than finding a single coin, meaning no health or weapons for those two levels other than your pistol. And once again, you can only be hit four times before death and there aren't checkpoints. So you're going to start back on stage one if you die. It is a difficult game when it intends to be. I mean, honestly, it is unforgiving. But the thing that I like about this game is it's not entirely meant to be beat after your first, fourth, or hell, even my tenth try. If you're lucky enough to gather coins and find a bank, you can store money for a serious playthrough and acquire some nice upgrades. I mean, that's how I won. You get lucky though, as I did my first time beating this, I found an armor piece that regenerated my health, another that gave me explosive shots, and I had one of the most overpowered weapons I had ever seen. Oh, and I also had a healing ability. Now I was unstoppable, I mean it really is a neat concept that I found to be a bit misunderstood. The key to this game is upgrades. You could have the worst gun, but the upgrades turn it into an absolute killing machine. For weapons, upgrades, and armor, like I said, they can be found or you can buy them from the blacksmith, the other dancing bird store, or behind a locked door that you'll need a golden key for. Every run results in random selection of these items, so you won't always be able to buy the shotgun, the minigun, or some upgrade that you wanted. A lot of this game is about adapting. Whether it be to the beat change or the arsenal selection, you gotta get accustomed to what's presented in front of you rather quickly. Lastly, we have game modes. Now, there are a few here, so most of these modes are the normal game with the sort of catch. You have the fully auto mode, where every gun is fully automatic, the retro run where you can't see shit other than the pixels moving in front of you. And the one that caught my eye is super time. It's where literally everything is to the beat of the music from your movement, 
enemy movement. I mean, even to the slightest background movement, like a flame. They gave us a good variety of modes, and that wasn't all of them. I didn't unlock all of them, but kudos to AWE for the effort and giving us a decent amount of fun content. Overall, this gameplay was unlike anything I've ever played in the sense of rhythm games, because I've obviously played Doom and Tomb of the Necrodancer. I never had an issue with any of the beats being off, and that was with me playing with and without headphones. Now, a small tip before I head into the design, rebind your keys. Two reasons. One, there is an ability slot that isn't even bound to your keyboard. And this second one, I didn't think it would matter, but it's what helped me beat the game. Bind your reload from R to the right mouse click. I promise you're going to thank me later. This game has a neat design, as in it has, in a sense, more than one design depending on the mode. The art style of this game kind of has me baffled. I mean, I don't know what the term for it is. All I know is it's centered around outlines, and it's neat, and I love it. Now, I do feel like I've seen it before, but I generally just can't place my finger on it. The anime design at first I wasn't too impressed, but as I moved through the stages, I found that they did make some interesting looking creatures, especially the bosses. Not so much the last one, but the other ones, yeah, they looked wicked. Now, the soundtrack is a mixed bag. Personally, yes, I do like the soundtrack. I mean, I couldn't get the songs out of my head. My issue is the variety. There is not a huge variety, which can be a bit upsetting seeing as this is a music-based game. But what they do have, yes, I, I did like it. So here's some clips and y'all tell me what you think. In my opinion, this game is worth the full $20. Now, I was hyped for this game for quite some time, as it was not only fresh, but it had the similarities of old school shooters, which y'all know I am a sucker for. Is this game perfect? No. But the amount of content and what we have is more than a deal for $20. Now, my best way to describe my overall experience, imagine a song that you can't get out of your head. Now, imagine a game that you just have the utmost desire to play. That is bullet per minute. That's all I got, folks. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? Otherwise, hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas.